Initially, starting off, we had an LS engine misfire. But that's what I'm talking about. I'm satisfied, you two, you two. Our LS engine misfire troubleshoot paid off. On our 72 convertible Impala LS3 swap, we finally got it back up and on the road. We spent a lot of money. Now that we finished, I want to share with y'all today what we could have did differently in the troubleshooting process so you won't have to spend as much money as we did. Because your LS swap is just as important as my LS swap. But before we do that, I want to ask you a question. How would you like to know how to do an LS swap in an old school car that run like this? I'm satisfied, you two, you two. Looking at maybe almost 600. Horsepower, we ain't put it on the dyno yet, YouTube. We did our own wiring. And we show y'all how to do the wiring, YouTube. Step by step, we did our fuel system. We show you how to do the fuel system as well. Step by step, YouTube. Everything you need to know. Now let's swap, baby. Make sure you watch this video all the way through. Make sure. You click that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on your notification bell. That way you see all the videos when we post them. And I need for you to drop me a comment in the comment section and say I'm riding with Chevy Zarus, Tom. Let Chevy Zarus help you do your LS swap, YouTube. We a family, man. We going to do this thing together. Y'all ready? Let's get it, you two. You two, you two, you two. This your boy, Tony, Tony, Tone, coming back at y'all. One more again, YouTube, with another great video on Chevy's R Us, man. Y'all already know what time it is, man. We in the garage, and guess what? Ain't nothing nobody can do about it, YouTube. Let's get it. All right, YouTube. Uh, we got the 72 convertible Impala LS swap that we did the LS engine misfire troubleshooting on right behind me i know y'all probably seeing the glimpse over there on the other side but we also got a 75 convertible caprice I'm sitting in the woods 28 years y'all unmolested yeah baby uh But we're not going to get into that today. Today, uh, we're going to focus on the 72 convertible Impala. And we're going to talk about what we could have did differently in our LS engine misfire troubleshooting process to save you some time and to save you a lot of money. It's not a good feeling to have your LS swap down and you're not able to drive it. Uh, I know it's important for you to get that vehicle back up and running like it's supposed to as quick as possible. And this information is going to help you do just that. And it's also going to help save you some money that you can put elsewhere in your LS swap bill. You know, who wants to spend too much money? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing pulled out the garage 
and we're gonna be right back in a minute. Two. Got the 72 convertible Impala out the garage. Still got the 75 Caprice over there. But yeah, I just wanna give y'all a quick walk around of it. Show y'all the project real quick. Yeah, this is the 72 LS Swap Impala. So, yeah, we've been working on it for quite some time. You know, it uh, needs a little, just a small amount of body work, not much at all. <coughs> but now that we got the mechanics right, uh, we're gonna start working on cosmetics. As soon as we get this rear end put in, we gotta put this rear end in right here. Uh, that's a 96 Impala SS rear end. It has disc brakes and a posi. So we're gonna put that in this guy right here. But anyway, let's get to the meat, YouTube. Initially, starting off, we had a, a, a misfire. We started executing a strategic troubleshooting process. In our previous video, this video is actually part of a series of videos in which we were strategically troubleshooting our LS swap engine misfire or our LS engine misfire. And so troubleshooting a LS engine misfire, uh, it can be very difficult to do so without spending a whole lot of unnecessary money. You got to use a strategic process so you don't end up spending that much money. But we still did end it up spending uh, too much money because we bought all new plugs. We put all new wires on it and we did all new coils. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have to do all that. So what I'm going to talk about today is what you could do differently uh, to prevent from spending that amount of money. So originally, we started out at the spark plug level, just checking our spark plugs. In that troubleshooting process, we were able to identify two problem cylinders. And they was a little dark and the fact that the spark plug was dark uh means that it was running too rich it had too much gas and not enough air or it had too much gas and a very weak spark indicating a bad coil pack or a bad wire and so we decided to go ahead and replace all the spark plugs and to be honest with you uh, that's something that we probably really didn't have to do. It was two problem cylinders originally. And the only thing that we probably should have done is replace those two coils on those two cylinders that was having the problem originally, which we identified uh, in the beginning of the troubleshooting process. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have to go buy all new coils. We could have just replaced those two. And that probably would have fixed our problem. That's probably the reason why those two spark plugs was a little dark, was running too rich, because it was getting too much gas and not enough fire. The coils was bad, and which was causing that. And so if we had originally just replaced those two spark plugs, those two wires, and those two coils, then we wouldn't have ended up spending as much money as we did. So y'all take note of that, man. And another thing that I want to let y'all know, man, uh, regarding this LS engine misfire troubleshooting is something that's going to save you from troubleshooting. Go with OEM coil packs. You know, I don't have OEM coil packs on here right now, but you better believe that I'm going to go with the OEM coil pack for the LS motor, man, because if you do some research and you look out there, you'll find that those coils don't hardly ever fail. All this aftermarket stuff fail. And the factory coils for the 6.0, the 6.2, the 5.3 liter, all of those coils, man, are pretty much interchangeable. They got different kinds or different styles of coils. But it's all in what style of coil you want. I got truck style coils on my car. And it works good. 
But I'm going to get the factory OEM truck style coils. And those coils are very, very expensive. They like 80 bucks a piece. And so you do the math. 70, 80 bucks a piece times eight. You know, I don't want to spend that right now. So we're going to hold off on that. But in the future, I'm going to have some OEM coils, y'all. That's just a rule of thumb. So keep that in mind, man. This LS engine misfire troubleshooting, man. It can become complicated. It can become difficult. And that's why we created these videos to help you get your LS engine misfire worked out, man, and to help people out, man. Got like four or five videos in which we've been troubleshooting this LS engine misfire. So, hey, click that link in the top right corner and check those videos out because it's extremely important to know how to troubleshoot a LS engine misfire or even how to troubleshoot an engine misfire period point blank. So make sure y'all check that out. Yeah, I know y'all see these uh, radiator hoses and uh, this, this clamp right here, man. These are not regular hoses and this is not a regular clamp. You're probably wondering what kind of clamp and what kind of hose that is. If you're interested in building a undestructible LS swap cooling system that you can never tear up and you ain't never got to worry about your car running hot, click on that link in the top right corner and take a look at that playlist, LS swap cooling system. Uh, you'll never have to put another dime into your LS swap cooling system. You'll never have to worry about your... LS swap cooling system running hot. We'll be back in a minute. Bye, YouTube. This is Chevy's R Us, and your LS swap is just as important as my LS swap. And so this is why we do this, man. We're giving up all the sauce. You know, we ain't holding no knowledge, no information back. So if you're doing an LS swap, or if you're thinking about doing an LS swap, it's important for you to connect with the Chevy's R Us family so you can start learning and start knowing everything you need to do, even if you in the middle of working on an LS swap right now. We got a lot of knowledge and a lot of information that will help make your LS swap easier. Or if, even if you run into some trouble with your LS swap, man, we go live every single Wednesday. Go live Wednesdays, y'all, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to connect with a whole community of people that have the same passion, the same desire, and the same interest as you. Old school cars and LS swaps. You know what I'm saying? So make sure y'all join us. Uh, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell. That way you see all the Chevy's R Us videos whenever we post them. You too, you too.